senior night here at Rutgers as a sellout crowd bids a fond farewell to the class of 2002. The Scarlet Knights host Seton Hall next. You name it, Rashad Kent has done it. More than 1,000 career points. He's second at Rutgers in career steals. Eight in career block shots. And he's the Scarlet Knights all-time leader in career field goal percentage. But his number one goal has yet to be accomplished. Can he lead Rutgers to the NCAA tournament? Fifteen times the home team has taken this floor this season and 14 times walked off with a win. From the Lewis Brown Athletic Center in Piscataway, New Jersey, the Seton Hall Pirates visit the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. And with only three games left in the regular season, Rutgers with 17 wins and 7-6 and six of the Big East, fighting for its life for its first NCAA tournament berth in 11 years. And a very pleasant good evening, everyone. I'm Bob Picozzi, along with Glenn Consor. Thanks so much for joining us for Big East basketball. It's already been a successful season for Rutgers. Six more wins than a year ago. And, Glenn, we touched on the contributions of Rashad Kent, but equally important has been the play of two newcomers. Absolutely. Jerome Coleman and Ricky Shields, those are the two wing plays that can really light it up. Coleman's on his way to breaking the all-time Rutgers three-point field goals made in a season, and Ricky Shields already three times this year has been the Big East Rookie of the Week. These two guys in the wing are tremendous. Seton Hall has lost five of its last six and is reduced to playing the role of spoiler, and freshman John Allen has already spoiled a lot of opposing coaches' evenings. Well, he certainly has. He's six foot five, but he does a lot of different things. He does all the intangibles coming off a huge game against Syracuse where he lit him up for 26 points. And Rashad Kent and his classmates honored before the 61st and final home game of their Rutgers career. Will they be able to extend the home court winning streak to seven? The starting lineups and opening tip are next. Welcome back to Piscataway, New Jersey, and the second meeting of the season between Seton Hall and Rutgers. Let's check out the starting lineups. The Pirates will go with Andre Barrett and Darius Lane in the backcourt. The center is Charles Manga. Up front, John Allen and Greg Morton for Rutgers. Rashad Kent and Sean Axani up front. The three-guard look in the backcourt with Ricky Shields, Jerome Coleman, and Mike Sherrod. These two have already met once this year. Seton Hall won that one at the Meadowlands. Rashad Kent will jump center with Charles Manga. Gene Manji throws the ball up. He's working tonight with Fran Connolly and Andre Patillo. And we're underway for the rack and Glenn to start a night, start out man to man. And that has been their staple all season. The key with this Rutgers team is how many possessions can they get off their swarming defense? They're going to try to wear down Andre Barrett this game. It's a quick foul by Manga so far. Seton Hall leads the series history 21 to 18. We mentioned their first meeting just a couple of weeks ago, and that one Seton Hall nearly blew a 15-point lead, which has been a big problem for the Pirates this year. Baseline shields, and he stepped on the end line. So we've had two possessions and two turnovers. This, of course, a big rivalry in the state of New Jersey. Lewis Orr's first taste of the rivalry this season in his first season as the coach at Seton Hall. Lewis Orr, the first ever former Big East player to be named the head coach at a Big East school. Three possessions, three turnovers. John Allen had his right arm out as leverage. Can't do that. Got to stay down low and try to blow by people. There's Gary Waters, the head coach of the Scarlet Knights. What a job he's done in his first year here. He coached Kent State to two NCAA tournament appearances in his three previous seasons. This is Sherrod, the sophomore from Brooklyn. Axani making his sixth start of the season. He's taken away that four-court starting spot from Eugene Dabney. Right side pull up right inside. Kent with the rebound up over Manga. Bob, you're going to notice this game when the ball goes down into Kent. They are not going to double down because they're more concerned about the wing players that we actually highlighted in the open in Shields and Coleman. So you won't see them double down on Kent. They think Manga can, Manga can handle him. And that they might make that adjustment inside if, if Kent really has his way with Manga, which he did on that play. Foul on Sherrod, his first. And as Barrett goes, he's called for traveling. Seton Hall has yet to take a shot. 
They've turned it over on each of their first three possessions. And that's something I talked to Lewis Orr about before this game, is really taking care of the basketball, because you can't make mistakes on Rutgers here at this place, because the crowd acts as almost like a, a third-wing player, aside from Coleman and Shields when Sherrod has the ball. Coleman missing his first shot. Barrett goes the other way. Throws the ball to Darius Lane. Finally, the first shot of the night for the Pirates. Rebound one-handed inside by Manga, and he's pushed to the floor by Kent. That will be number one on Rashad and two on the Scarlet Knights. Even though Manga is the only low post threat that Seton Hall has, I don't think that they should rely on the quick three. They need to make sure that they share the basketball, touch it a little bit, go into the 35-second clock versus the quick jacks. Well, they didn't listen to you on that one. Here's two threes on this possession, and Barrett will shoot three. See, I think when you play in this kind of environment, Bob, you need to you need to just use the clock a little bit, get the crowd out, make them force them to play defense versus a quick jack. You get a quick jack here, they get a quick rebound. They got some good transition players on this Rutgers team. So that's double bad news for Rutgers. Number one, Barrett was attempting a three. He'll shoot three, but two, Glenn. It's foul number two on Sherrod. He'll have to sit down. Yeah, and that's a big foul right there, and Barrett now going to the line. You've got to be under control when you run at a three-point shooter or someone that's out behind that arc because you don't want to give up three. And now Sherrod will depart, and he'll be replaced by Joel Wigan, although we haven't heard the horn yet. Wigan is waiting there, and they didn't send him in. Now they send him in after the second free throw. I thought Joel Wigan played well against Pittsburgh and Rutgers lost to Pittsburgh where the Pittsburgh defense really stifled this team. Sherrod had a decent game penetrating but he didn't shoot well. Rutgers losing at Pittsburgh 78-59 on Thursday night. One of five double-digit road losses this year for the Scarlet Knights and if they don't make the NCAA tournament their road record is going to be the reason why. Here at home they're terrific. 14-1 including four wins against top 25 teams. Two-three zone for the Pirates, Glenn. Well, you have to know where the shooters are on this team. In this case, it's Coleman and Shields, and you can't get there too late. Good defense that time by Seton Hall. Mango almost ran over Barrett. Barrett penetrates down the lane. Right side jumper, Morton, and the rebound is pulled down by Wiggins. Seton Hall by one. We've played just over two minutes. Pirates 5-8 in the Big East, Rutgers 7-6. The drive over Manga is Coleman. See, this is why Coleman, Bob, is so dangerous, because he's a great three-point shooter. He's got phenomenal range. A 28-footer is like a layup for him, but he could also take you off the bounce, so you really got to play him honest. Coleman had eight three-pointers last Sunday against Miami. Axani knocks it away from Morton, and Keck comes away with it. He's second all-time and steals at Rutgers. Boy, that's shocking. Coleman over lane. And the rebound is run down by Allen, who saves to Morton. Coleman got a piece of it, and here's Barrett. Right side lane, head fake, results in the open three. Darius Lane's 262 career three. He's second on the all-time Pirates list. And he is historically, throughout his career, been a streaky three-point shooter. If he gets hot, he can carry this team, but Barrett's the guy that calms him down and gets everybody involved. Kent down low, looks for a safety valve, and it's Wigan. Nice job. See, that time against the zone, they collapsed on him, and they, they weren't following the Lewis Orr game plan. But with Wigan not known for his shooting, there's two Kent, points for sometimes, Wigan. Sometimes, Bob, you can't pay attention to the scattering reports. And there's Kent. You see why he's second in career steals. Coleman finds Shields for the left side three. And Kent with the offensive rebound. He'll draw the foul. Foul will be on Morton, his first and three on the Pirates. You know, Shields has been undersized his whole career. He's second all-time in steals. He's got the very quick hands, and Shields throws up a scud missile. But look at the timing. Nose for the ball. And like all great rebounders that are undersized, he just has a feel and a nose for where that ball's coming off the rim. In that case, there was no rim. Now, I don't know whether Ken was cut, and uh, I don't mean this harshly because we certainly hope Rashad's okay, but 
we might point out that Rashad Kent is a 34.9% free throw shooter. So as long as that's not a serious cut, it's a gratuitous one for Rutgers. So are you saying that was a well-timed injury, Bob? <laughs> are, you, are you beating around the bush or are you getting to the point? I, I'm saying they have a better chance with Irve Lamazana at the free throw line than they do with Kent. No, actually, he, yeah, he might have cut himself when he went up on that rebound. Might have got a fingernail into the uh, wrist. Kent this season has spent a ton of time at the line, 166 attempts, but he only makes 35% of them, and he's been a liability late in the game when the team they're playing needs to foul when they're behind. Lamazana perfect from the line, and Eugene Dabney will immediately replace him. Gary Waters taking advantage of the rule, which allows you to substitute whomever you want if for whatever reason the guy who's fouled can't make the free throw attempts. So Rutgers lining up in a 1 2 2 full court zone press. Zani on the ball. They'll trap. They'll try to trap right away. It's soft. They'll take it off. Barrett defended by Wigan. He played four minutes. It's a two point Rutgers lead. Morton sets the high pick. Barrett goes down the lane. Rebound off the hands of Wigan to Barrett. He gives to Allen and a step-in steal by Coleman. Turnover number six for Seton Hall. Remember, they turned it over on their first three possessions. Coleman has it knocked away for a moment by Lane. Coleman, left side, Shields. He's doubled to the cutter, Wigan. And he'll be called for steps. And that'll bring us to our first official timeout of the evening. Rutgers and Seton Hall going at it for the 40th time, and the Scarlet Knights with a two-point lead. It's a two-point lead for Rutgers. We've played four and a half minutes. Glad you could join us from the rack. And what an atmosphere it is here. In fact, Glenn Jim Beheim said that he thinks it's the toughest place to win on the road in the Big East. Well, the indication, their record indicates it as you see Rashad Kent still on the bench, but Pittsburgh being the only team to beat Gary Waters' team here is, uh, is a great indication of that. Rutgers has struggled on the road to some degree. They've had some good wins, but a little surprising when your big guy leads you in steals. Yeah, Kent has added to that total with one more thus far tonight. Gary Waters told me, I believe the atmosphere here makes this one of the top three arenas in the country I know it can be devastating to opponents and Rutgers has four wins in this building this year against top 25 teams first time ever Rutgers has beaten four top 25 teams in one season Lane left side Allen to the left of the lane Morton backs in on Axani and shoots over him. Morton certainly not a big scorer had four points in the loss to Syracuse on Thursday night at the Meadowlands. 2-3 Pirate Zone, and Kent will re-enter at the next stop. Wigan on the left shield. Low block, Gabby. He's doubled. Doubles it inside to Axani. Rebound battered around. Axani kept it alive. Coleman, and he ties the record. That was his 82nd three-pointer this season, tying the single-season record set previously by Todd Billet. You know, he might hold the, se the season record for unorthodox makes on threes, too, <laughs> because he could really jack them up, and he's got great range. Look at the dribble job by Andre Barrett. Axani got a piece of the shot, and Allen, with good work off the offensive glass, will get a trip to the line. Dabney and Allen uh, tangled up inside. Axani his first and four on the Scarlet Knights. There's a look at Axani who missed all of last year with a broken foot. Six, seven sophomore from Red Bank, New Jersey. And what a terrific season it's been for individually for John Allen. And just to show you what kind of scholastic career he had, John Allen scored 2,372 points at Coatesville High School, eclipsing the school record held by one Richard Hamilton. Whatever happened to that guy? He's uh, in the backcourt with Jordan now, that's all. <laughs> now let's take a moment to thank our corporate partner, Cooper Tire, proud to be the official tire of the Big East Conference. Cooper Tires, drive on. Of course, 
Richard Hamilton, an All-American on UConn's national championship team in 1999, coming out of the Big East, and his career scoring record in high school eclipsed by Seton Hall's John Allen. Two-point Rutgers lead. We've played six minutes. Pirates stay in the zone. Lamazana has re-entered the Rutgers. Quick turn and shoot for him. Rebound baseline battered around. Last touch by Wiggins. Shot Kent pleading his case to Fran Connolly. It will fall on deaf ears. See, I think Gary Waters is a little concerned about the tempo of, of this game so far. This, this game is not going up and down, and this is exactly the way Seton Hall wants to play this. Methodical. Rutgers got up just a few more shots than Seton Hall, but they're not getting possessions off their defense. They're not getting much in the transition game. Barrett played man-to-man -man by Wigan. Lane. Coleman on him. He's doubled, leaves for Manga. Allen for three. <laughs> well, Give him it four. Pro probably wouldn't have counted in horse. Give him four. Of course he was trying to kiss that off the glass. That's what they should do. If it's off the glass, you go for it. <laughs> You've seen a lot of scud missiles come flying off there. Left side three by Shields and Lane way up in the air for the rebound. Pirates with the ball up one. Barrett finds Allen left, goes baseline. Leaves for Lane for three. His second of the night. Seton Hall entering the ball game had attempted 192 more three-pointers than their opponents. They are a three-point happy team. And sometimes, Glenn, the Pirates are far too one-dimensional in that respect. Very surprising how the tempo's going this game. There's, there's Coleman, and there's the record. That's a long shot. Man. There's Coleman with the record and letting Darius Lane hear about it afterwards. So Jerome Coleman has established a new Rutgers single-season record for a three-point field goal, that was his 83rd of the year. And as Barrett drives, he's fouled by Lamazana. So Coleman's got to be careful here. He's he's in a big time. You see Rashad Kent talking to him. He's in a big time trash talking contest with Lane, and that's Lane's game. I've seen Lane do that for a number of years now. But he bangs this three in from about 25 feet out, and as he goes back, he just wants to remind Lane that it was in his face. That's all he was saying on the whole way back. He just broke Todd, Todd Billett's single season record. And he's got a ways to go to put some distance between himself yep. and the former record with two more regular season games plus the Big East tournament. And obviously Rutgers is going, no question, is going to be playing in a postseason tournament. It's just a question of which one. Well, they got to gotta somehow find their way to that 20 win magic number. And that's going to help. If they run the table here in the regular season, they would have 20 before the Big East Tournament. They have Virginia Tech away on Wednesday and Georgetown away next Saturday. Virginia Tech playing much better down the stretch than the Hokies were earlier this afternoon at home. They beat Providence. In the lane, Sherrod is fouled by Barrett. That will be number one on him and four on Seton Hall. That was a nice move by Sherrod getting into the lane, but there was no help defense. And at the free throw line is Sherrod, a 6'2 sophomore from Brooklyn. Went to Paul Robeson High School. In fact, he was a teammate in high school of his current Rutgers teammate, Jerome Coleman. Rutgers 17-9 overall, 7-6 in the league. We saw what they've done against top 25 teams. That RPI ranking at 60. And that's got to come down a little bit if they finish strong. And I think it will. They had that big win against Miami. Pittsburgh game would have been a nice win to have at Pittsburgh. Right. Re Reach-in foul is called on Coleman. His first and six on the Scarlet Knights. 11.52 to go in the first half at the rack, and the Pirates and the Scarlet Knights are all even. Seton Hall and Rutgers all even in the 40th meeting between these two. They've had some great ones over the years, including two years ago. It went into overtime, and Rutgers took an eight-point lead in overtime, helped by this Rashad Kent play inside. Kent relentless off the offensive glass. 
The good news here, Glenn, is Ken with the great hustle play. The bad news is he called a timeout. The Scarlet Knights did not have technical foul. Seton Hall gets it back, and Ty Shine hits what turns out to be the game-winning basket. The Pirates win it 65-63. It seems like Ty Shine has been there for about 20 years. <laughs> Ty Shine, of course, uh, had his shining moment indeed in the NCAA tournament that same year in 2000 when his buddy Shaheen Holloway went down with an injury early against Temple in the second round. And it was Shine that hit the game winning shot and had a terrific game as Seton Hall beat the out. Following the timeout, Rutgers with the ball. Newcomer in the lineup for the Scarlet Knights, Jason McCoy, a freshman from Houston. He's number 21. Lamazana, eyes Kent, tries to go around Manga, and Manga got a piece of it. Rebound pulled down by Allen. Manga, his 32nd block shot of the year, he leads the Pirates. Lane, ball fake, and then finds Allen. Allen, over McCoy. Oof. That was nice. That looked like Jordan creating all that space on a little head fake and just step back move by Allen. He has been on fire, shooting the ball very nicely. 27 against Syracuse on Thursday. Lamazana with the foul line jumper. Rebound. Allen tries to direct to a teammate and does. Barrett to Lane. And he's fouled by Lamazana. Number two on Irve and already 17 fouls on the Scarlet Knights. Lane will shoot two, but every Rutgers foul for the remaining 10.46 of the half will result in Seton Hall free throws. Well, there's an old expression in basketball. Teams that run don't like to get run on, and right now Rutgers is going to have to make sure they get back in the transition game because a couple easy baskets and a couple easy jump shots on the wings have hurt Rutgers right now, not matching up well. One guard penetrates, the other guy's got to get back. That is a scud missile from the free throw. Wow. The fourth consecutive missed free throw for the Pirates, but at least the other three drew some iron. And he's going to, he's hearing it. And Lane is a 72% free throw shooter. He had a strange game on Thursday night against Syracuse. Darius has never been, shall we say, shy when it comes to, when it comes time to taking shots. He only attempted six field goals in 30 minutes the other night against the Orange. That yeah, is quite shocking. One of the things Lewis always wants him to do is be more selective on his threes. Pirates in the 2-3 zone. They've been in it virtually throughout. Mauricio Brandwell, a freshman number 40, has checked in for Seton Hall, and the Knights turned it over again. Their third turnover the Knights. That's just bad communication. Shouldn't happen at this point of the year where the ball goes inside and someone cuts in. There's a miscue. Barrett defended by Sherrod. He's back in the game with two fouls. Lane for three, already has a couple of them. And Manga with the offensive rebound and a fresh 35. Barrett collides with Kent, leaves for Manga. You know, some, something that has not been mentioned over the last three, four weeks is that Manga has been rebounding terrific. He had 15 rebounds against Georgetown. And he's really come on his senior year, the last five, six games, on the boards. And another turnover for the Scarlet Knights as McCoy throws it away. And Manga, coming off a double-double in the loss to Syracuse on Thursday, had 11 points and 10 rebounds. This is just an extension of how they looked against Pittsburgh, Bob. Just a passing, not efficient. No communication on offense. Everybody talks about communicating on defense. You need to communicate on offense. It's got to be a lot of the nonverbal stuff going right. on, and it's been missing with Rutgers over the last two games. Allen works his way in on Shields, misses everything, rebound Shields, and the Scarlet Knights will head the other way. Here's Sherrod, he picked up two early fouls. Left side, Lamazana. Rebound Manga again. He's averaged 11 points and nine rebounds in his last six games. Look at the crossover move by Allen, and coming from nowhere, Rashad Kent. He is eighth all-time at Rutgers in block shots. That was his 85th. You know, one thing Kent has been known for throughout his career is making plays that can ignite a crowd. And right now, he's trying to figure out a way to get the crowd involved and get his team going. Eugene Dabney checks in for Rutgers. We are at the Lewis Brown Athletic Center in Piscataway, New Jersey. 
Glad you could join us for Big East basketball. I'm Bob Picozzi along with Glenn Consor. With 9.08 remaining first half, Seton Hall leads Rutgers 19-15. Crucial game for the Scarlet Knights in their quest for their first NCAA tournament appearance since 1991. Dabney chases down the loose rebound and throws it off the foot of Lane and out of bounds. So it will be Rutgers ball with 31 left on the shot clock. Dismal shooting has led to some long rebounds this game and really shows the importance of the guards having to make sure that they focus on getting those long rebounds out by the foul line. Boy, we've seen some big time jacks with some long rebounds this game. Here's another one. Sherrod with the miss. Rebound Branwell gives to Barrett. Barrett leads Seton Hall in scoring and assists, having a terrific sophomore year. Finds Allen down low, wants to go on Cole. And with the acrobatic move, gets it up and over Kent. He's got eight. That was nice spacing, Bob, on that play to Allen. Ball went into the low post, and everybody kind of left him. Gave him some room to operate. Rutgers only five of 18 from the floor. Sherrod in the lane. Shields, left side jumper. Rebound inside, battered around. Branwell and Dabney were both there. And I think Branwell, the freshman, is going to get called for the foul. That's his first and number five on Seton Hall. So Sherrod will inbound beneath the Scarlet Knights basket. Gives to Sherrod. Penetrates. Rebound inside Kent. Hands off to Dabney. How did he even see him? <laughs> not only was it a great pass, but it was a great catch, too, because I'm not too sure Dabney knew it was coming. Always a good idea to keep your hands up. Dabney, the 6'11 junior from Birmingham. Lane gives to Branwell. Seven and a half remaining. First half, Seton Hall by four. Barrett. And down low, we're going to get a foul on Allen. It's his second, and both of them have come at the offensive end. That's six on the Pirates. Timeout, 7.23 to go in the first half. Seton Hall trying to break a three-game losing streak. Rutgers looking for its seventh straight home win. It's a four-point Seton Hall lead, seven and a half remaining first, uh, first half. And Glenn, at the very beginning of the telecast, we suggested our viewers keep their eyes on the freshman from Coatesville, Pennsylvania. Well, John Allen causes some matchup problems because he's six foot five. He's got great range. And I'm not too sure he meant to bank that one, but nonetheless, he got the three. But his ability to turn, face, score from three, and also post up is posing some problems right now for Rutgers. Right now he's got eight points, three rebounds. He's three for five from the floor, and it truly is an extension of the last time he was on the floor when he had 26 points against Syracuse. Now let's take a look at the Hyundai game summary. The Pirates shooting nearly 50% from the floor, and Rutgers really struggling at 6 of 21. Well, Rutgers just isn't getting shots in the transition game, not getting much off their defense. And this is exactly a replica, a replica of what happened in the Pittsburgh game. A little lethargic on defense, right. not getting possessions, and that's one of the things Gary Waters was concerned about. It making sure the Pittsburgh game was not a setback game. Palmer already has a couple of threes. That's his third of the night. He's got 11 points. He's in double figures for the 22nd time this year. Interesting thing about Coleman's first year here at Rutgers, every time he has a single-digit game, which is not a good game for him, he normally comes back and gets in the 20s. Allen down low, turns, tipped up once by Bradwell, and then a second time. Mauricio Bradwell, six foot eight inch freshman from Brooklyn. See, Andre Barrett commands so much attention when he penetrates. The threes, the fours, and the fives on Seton Hall are going to have to make sure that they're ready and move to open spots. Fifth in the Big East in assist is Andre Barrett. Had 135 of them entering the ball game. Another turnover for the Scarlet Knights, and we head the other way. Barrett, as always, head up. Finds Manga right of the lane. Back 
outside to Allen. Allen will throw up the three. Rebound Manga. Lewis Orr told me before the game that if they make threes and if they rebound, they're going to hang around and they have a, they'll have a chance to win. So far, Bob, it's been happening. Well, they out-rebounded Syracuse by 14 the other night. Right side, Bramwell has made his presence felt since checking in. Four quick points for the freshman. A big night for the seat now freshman with Allen and Bramwell. Down low, great penetration by Sherrod. Rashad Kent, Rutgers' all-time career leader in field goal shooting at 60.1%. Barrett misses the three, and we'll go the other way. Lewis Orr almost jumped out of his suit yeah, on the last defensive segment because Branwell was playing a man-to-man -man when they were in a zone. And he saw it early before he came on half court, before they came over half court, and he was trying to make sure he was aware of it. And now he takes a seat, right. Branwell, and he, he won't be he won't be doing that on no, this no. possession. But that's a communication thing that happens, and you got to make sure it doesn't happen because you give up baskets like Seton Hall just did. Desmond Harrod replaces him with penetration by Coleman. He hits one in the lane. He's got 13 points in the first 15 minutes. He had a career high 30 last Sunday in the win over 11th ranked Miami. Rutgers pulls within one, lane, right side pull up. Barely grazed the side of the rim. Here's Sherrod. Picked up by Barrett. Bad pass, good catch by Kent. Right side, another three for Coleman. And inside, great hustle by Kent, but he couldn't control the rebound. And what an ovation he received before the ball game when he was introduced with the other seniors in the senior night ceremonies. That's a good call, Bob, because, you know, if anything, Kent leaves it all on the floor when he plays. A little bit undersized, and, and he's improved his offensive game as the years have gone on. He's got quick feet, lost some weight, became more chiseled. Morton's foot was on the end line before he released the shot. That's nine turnovers for Lewis Orr's club. And Kent will get a rest replaced by Sean Exani. Kent's the second leading rebounder in the Big East, and already tonight, has moved ahead of former Rutgers great Roy Henson. He's got five rebounds tonight, and he moves into fourth place on the career rebounding list here at Rutgers. Down low intended for Dabney, and they throw it away. It's been a turnover riddle game for both clubs. It really has just poor passing on the perimeter the whole game for Rutgers passing sides. That's a bad angle because the guy in the box just wasn't set. So he's throwing it to a spot. He's got to find somebody first. Turnover number six for Rutgers. Nine for the Hall. The up and under move by Barrett. Five points for Barrett. He had 19 Thursday night against Syracuse. Hall still playing that two-three zone. Wigan for three. Back rimmed it. A good hustle for the offensive rebound by Dabney. Sherrod gives to Dabney, back to Sherrod. Both Kent and Coleman out of the lineup right now. And a traveling violation is called on Shields. Timeout, 326 remaining. First half, Rutgers hoping for win number 18. Scarlet Knights down three. Rutgers trails by three. It's been 11 years since the Scarlet Knights played in the NCAA tournament. Last time it happened, former Rutgers great Bob Wenzel was on the Rutgers sideline. Minus the gray hair. He looks about 25. In yeah, he doesn't anymore, clip. by the way. Daryl Smith <laughs> with the steal to give Rutgers the two-point lead. But Arizona State's Isaac Austin with the baseline jumper to give the Sun Devils a two-point lead. Final 79 to 76. Whatever happened to that guy Wentzel, by the way? He, of course, is our uh, ESPN Plus colleague on Big East basketball. Was a great player here. Played on Rutgers NIT teams during his playing days. And later came back to coach the Scarlet Knights when they first joined the Big East. Rashad Kent will re-enter. Three-point lead for Seton Hall with 3.20 remaining in the first half. Barrett defended by Wigan. Morton up high, right side to Herrick. 
Manga. See if he tries to go on Dabney. Turns and shoots over. Dabney made that one difficult. He's a shot blocker himself, Dabney. Seventh on the all-time Rutgers career list. You notice no one double-teaming Manga when he had the ball. They're more concerned about the four perimeter players of Seton Hall. Good job defensively by Rutgers. Wigan up top shield. Starts to penetrate. Axani with the offensive rebound. And great hustle for another offensive rebound by Shield. Inside Axani, offensive foul, his second. Without Kent and without Coleman on the floor, the offensive options for Rutgers are somewhat limited. Well, that was just predictable play by Manga. Zani's got to give a little pump fake, a little drop step. I almost jumped over the table here to try to take it myself, but we're too high up. <laughs> Back in is Kent, also Lamazana, re-enters for the Scarlet Knights. Barrett lost the handle, throws it up and over Lamazana, who gets the rebound. Right side, Shields. Seton Hall retreats to its zone. The runner for Sherrod up and over Manga. Field goal of the night for Sherrod. He's got three, and the Seton Hall lead down to one. Lane. Around the screen comes Marcus Tony L, but an off balance jump shot. Tony L started 10 games earlier in the year, but now comes off the bench. Didn't score against Syracuse on Thursday night. And Gary Waters wants a timeout with 143 remaining and 23 seconds left on the shot clock. Lewis Orr's Pirates leading Rutgers by one. And Gary Waters told me we have to do a better job off the defensive glass. We must improve our shot selection. We are too impatient. Around the country, fifth ranked Oklahoma with a big game tonight against Texas. Alabama with a huge win in the SEC over Florida today. Later on, out west, Gonzaga will play at St. Mary's. Stanford losing at home to UCLA. That's two straight losses for the Cardinal. Kentucky with a 13-point home win today over Arkansas. And in the Big East, at the half, Miami trailing Notre Dame by five at the half. Oklahoma State, 13-point win over Baylor. Virginia losing again. That's wow. eight out of their last ten for the wow. Cavaliers. Later on, out west, Washington at Oregon. Ohio State trailing Purdue by five first half. Northwestern losing to 19th-ranked Illinois. Illinois beat Seton Hall a week ago today. And Georgia with a one-point win on the road over LSU. Second to last weekend of the regular season in college basketball. And Barrett will be called for the foul. Tried to take it away from Wigan instead. He'll pick up his second personal, and that's seven on Seton Hall. So the Scarlet Knights will shoot the one and one. Joel Wigan, a 6'3 freshman, went to Columbus High School, then prepped at Notre Dame Academy in Massachusetts, lives in the Bronx. Had 10 points the other night against Pittsburgh. Glenn, you mentioned a couple of times that the Scarlet Knights playing Similarly to the way they did the other night. The other night, they did it against the 10th ranked team in the country. Pittsburgh's done that to a lot of teams. Yeah, Pittsburgh does things based on their defense, and Brandon Knight is having a Big East player of the year type season. He just does all the little things, plays great defense, and he did a great job of running the club and running the show and playing terrific defense on Coleman. Actually, Julius Page played great defense on Coleman for 40 minutes. Lewis Orr right now not happy with these late surge of fouls. Well, Coleman knocked it away from Lane, and when Lane tried to get it back, he was whistled for the foul. It's one on him and eight on the Pirates. Coleman missing the free throw. Had just eight points on three of 11 shooting in the loss at Pittsburgh on Thursday. Seton Hall has missed its last five free throws, and now Manga will try to end that streak. And Lewis Orr going 
deep to his bench, bringing in Raheem Carter, a 6'3 junior from Long Branch, New Jersey. He's only played 28 minutes all season. And this is a little bit early to see him. Manga already with six rebounds in the first 18 plus minutes. Of course, the last couple of years, Manga was a reserve to Samuel D'Alembert, who decided to enter the NBA draft early. And this is Manga's opportunity in his senior year, his last go-round, and he's certainly making the most of it. That's the thing that people forgot already. They lost D'Alembert and Eddie Griffin. Plus their coach, Tommy Amick, who departed to go to Michigan. So the fortunes of this Seton Hall program have changed dramatically from the team which went to the Sweet 16 two years ago and had that much ballyhooed recruiting class coming in last year. Lamazana for three, and Lane all alone for the rebound. Timeout Seton Hall with 49 seconds remaining. And Lewis Orr will try to set something up with his club up three. Looking for the latest information on the 2002 Conagra Foods Big East Basketball Championship? Why not visit the Big East website at www.bigeast.org. Championship merchandise, ticket information, complete brackets, and schedules, tourney history, and more are available. The Big East website is the one-stop source to get you ready for March Madness. It all begins March 6th at Madison Square Garden. And Glenn, I know we say this every year, that the conference tournament will be more exciting than ever. But this year we mean it more than ever because <laughs> it would appear that four teams, Syracuse and Pittsburgh from the West Division, UConn and Miami from the East have a great chance of getting in the NCAA tournament. And four others, including Rutgers, still have to play their way in and the Big East tournament may be the way to do it. Right, and everybody's talking about the future, you know, the potential of 20 wins, but at this point in the season, it's really taking it one game at a time. It's getting the victory against the team that you are playing right now at the end of the season going and then going into the tournament. You look ahead, that's when you get bumped. Lamazana looked ahead and he found Coleman, but he missed the layup. Indecisive, do I duck it or do I lay it off the glass? Barrett down the other way, goes up and over Barrett, countered in the foul. Go up and over Kent, that is. And Barrett with a chance for a three-point play. He's got seven. Barrett's got the little stutter step move that gets him inside, shows good concentration, and that's one area that he has improved this year. Putting on some upper body strength from last year, Andre Barrett now has the ability to finish inside. So Kent departs with two personal fouls, two fouls each on Lamazana, Sherrod, Kent, and Aksani. So Gary Waters is going to have to manage that situation carefully. Shot clock is off. Time remaining in the half. Rutgers down by six. Coleman defended by Lane. Pirates will go man-to-man -man on this final Rutgers possession of the half. Coleman throws up the deep three. Rebound Morton. If he hurries, they can get something. Coleman with the steal. It'll count. That would have been a heck of a way to head into the half. Seton Hall had a 21-4 run to end the first half the last time these two teams met. And they have a 7-2 run this time. They're up by six. It's Seton Hall 32, Rutgers 26 at halftime. Welcome back to the Lewis Brown Athletic Center in Piscataway, New Jersey. I'm Bob Picozzi along with Glenn Consor. Glad you could join us for this very important Big East basketball game, particularly for Rutgers. And I wonder if Rutgers, Rutgers looks like they're playing a little tight to me, Glenn, and I wonder if they're aware of what's at stake. Well, they certainly are. You know, in the first half, I think the energy level was down from Rutgers' standpoint. With the exception of Coleman, I think he came ready to play. But they've got nothing inside from Kent, and I think it's hurt him. Andre Barrett did a great job of taking care of the basketball. Good little change of speed dribble to blow by Sherrod. He's really doing a nice job of running the show. But the X factor in this game for Seton Hall is Allen, who seems to be posing some matchup problems for Rutgers right now. He could turn and face and also play with his back to the basket. And as we take a look at the first half statistics, neither team exactly shot the lights out. No, I, I think it was a poor performance because I think Rutgers is relying too much on the perimeter game right now. 
Kent only has two points inside. They have, they really haven't mixed up their game, but more importantly, this is an energy issue with Rutgers right now. These guys right now have to do more with their defense, get into the transition game, and start getting some possessions. Six points, Seton Hall lead at the half. We'll be back from the rack where the Rutgers have won six straight at home for the start of the second half right after this. It's a six-point Seton Hall lead at halftime. Bob Picozzi with Glenn Consor ready to start the second half. Rutgers 17-9 overall, 7-6 in the Big East. And if you need 20 wins to get in the NCAA tournament, this one's crucial for the Scarlet Knights, particularly Glenn, since they will conclude the regular season with two on the road. Well, one of the adjustments Rutgers is going to have to make in the second half is establish Kent inside and turn up the heat defensively, get the crowd going. This has been a lethargic first half for Rutgers. Gary Waters knows it. Intensity is going to be the key the next 20 minutes. And with the basketball, Rutgers to start the second half. Coleman, who had a terrific first half with 13 points. Down low, Kent. Reverse layup, no good. And the foul will be called, I believe, on Morton. That will be number two on him and first on Seton Hall this half. And to the free throw line will go Kent. We've already illustrated his free throw woes, not only throughout this season, but throughout his career. It's really the one chink in his armor. One of the things Kent's going to have to do is make sure he's open and make sure he establishes position inside. He's going to make him on senior night here, Bob. Right. I think he could throw that jinx right out the window, that 35%. He's going to make him here. Gary Waters, you know, he talked to these guys at halftime and said, you know what, let's get the ball inside, establish Kent in the middle. They double team, let's force them to bring the help side defense in so we can get some outside shots by Shields and Coleman. Now, Shields has also been somewhat quiet. Indeed he has. Ricky Shields, the three-time Big East Rookie of the Week, did the score and was 0 for 7 from the floor in the first half. 0 for 4 from three-point range. He's the second leading scorer. For the Scarlet Knights averaging 12.3 per ball game. Down low, great look, Allen to Morton, but he missed the layup. Gets his own rebound, sets up Barrett for three. 11 points for Andre Barrett in double figures for the 25th time in 27 games this year. 42nd time in his career. This is the biggest lead of the night for the Pirates at eight. Down low, Kent. Played by Mango. Puts it on the floor and goes up and over Mangle. Tipped up by Aksani. Rebound on a hop to Barrett. Barrett, what a screen that Morton set. Sherrod ran into it. Great box out by Kent enables Sherrod to get the rebound. Well, that was just a terrific box out. Not only by Kent, but by Shield as well. You know it's a great box out when the ball hits the floor and everybody's on your back. Allen went for the steal, and right now 0 for 8 from the floor. Great hustle play by Axani. He saves. The shot clock did not recycle, but Sherrod stepped on the sideline. Gary Waters took Kent State to the NCAA tournament last year, the NIT two years ago, the NCAA three years ago. Keep your eye on Kent as he got, as he has Manga on his back, and you see the ball hit the floor. Shields picks it up. You know, when you think of rebounding, you think the guy's taking it off the rim, but no. The great rebound is get guys on their back and let that ball hit the floor. A lot of guys look at the rim, and that's the lost auto rebound. Allen and Morton mixed up under signals. Shields drives. He's 0 for 9, but nobody put a body on Axani. His first two points. So this is the tempo they want to play. Even if you get misses in the transition game, you're going to get offensive rebounds. The Rutgers went 32 minutes getting no points from two of their starters before Axani finally gets on the board. Shields has yet to get on the board. Sherrod gets the screen from Axani and goes right around. Morton. Nice. I'd get a timeout if I'm Lewis Orr right now. Five points for him. He's going to let him play. Around the screen comes Lane. Started to go in the lane. Wicked collision between Kent and Lane. Six points for Manga. And now Gary Waters is going to call the timeout. And he's giving Axani an earful. 
with 17-16 remaining and a six-point seat Hall lead. Rutgers 14-1 at home but find themselves trailing the Pirates. Rutgers trails by six. Last year, the Scarlet Knights did not qualify for the Big East Tournament. Gary Waters wanted to rectify that situation in his first year at the helm. The primary goal we had coming in is we wanted to make the Big East Tournament. That was a goal. I mean, we, we worked every day to get us to that point. And the second thing is, I'm a believer, if we can get to 500 in the, at, by the end of this season in the Big East, we have done a great thing in this program because they've never been that close. And 500 would be, a, I think, a, a good direction for this program. And a win tonight, and the Scarlet Knights would achieve that goal. They sit at 7-6 and six with three games remaining in the conference, 17 wins overall, and they will close out the regular season at Virginia Tech on Wednesday and at Georgetown next Saturday. They don't have to worry about not making the Big East tournament, Glenn. <laughs> that game against Georgetown is going to be a tough one, as is Virginia Tech. Finishing out strong is not an easy thing to do in this conference. And after Zani got an earful from Gary Waters, he shows his range. He didn't score for the first 32 minutes, has four points in the last minute. Great look, Barrett inside the board, but he missed the layup. Boy, you really can see how much attention Barrett gets when he gets into the paint. Two more for Axani. Whatever Gary Waters said certainly made an impact. And Rutgers, who was down eight, finds themselves within two. Timeout, Lewis Orr, with 16.29 remaining. And now, of course, Seton Hall has the problem because the crowd here at the rack, and what a crowd it is, it's a sellout for the third time this year, is really into it. Well, you see, Rutgers' game is the transition game off of steals. You see, Xani do a good job of running the floor with the finish. A nice dish by Sherrod. And again, the big guys got to get back. When you play Rutgers, the Rutgers big guys, because they don't really have that many, it's really Kent at 6'5", and Xani at 6'7", those guys run the floor. So if you're a front court player on an opposing team, you got to make sure you get back in the transition game. And right now, Rutgers trying to get that transition game going by pushing the ball up the floor to the front court players. And Sean Axani has six of those eight Rutgers points during this 8-2 run, which has cut the Seton Hall lead from 8-2. to two. The other thing you can't do against Rutgers is you can't miss chippies. Barrett did a great job of getting in the lane before. Morton missed that little chippy inside. You've got to finish those plays off. And Coleman with the silly reach-in foul in the backcourt. That will be number two on him and the first team foul on Rutgers here in the second half. The Scarlet Knights with their 14 wins already at home this year. The most wins at home in 20 years. They went 16 and one here at the rack back in 1981-82. Left side, Allen puts it on the floor, creates some space and hits the jumper. 10 points for Allen who's in double figures for the sixth time in his last seven games and the 16th time this year. Well, Seton Hall is doing a nice job of spreading the floor on Rutgers with great spacing and executing their offense nicely. Mango fronted Ken who could not handle that pass. Turnover number 10. Timeout. Seton Hall with a four-point lead. We mentioned at the beginning of the telecast how instrumental Ricky Shields has been in his freshman year here at Rutgers, averaging 12 points per game, 43-point field goals. But thus far, Glenn, it has been a nightmare for the freshman from Upper Marlboro, Maryland. Yeah, he's really struggled. And one of the things that Seton Hall has been trying to do this game is really make sure that the three-point game of Rutgers has been dissipated and it really has been obviously shield 0 for 9. They wanted to take away three-point momentum from Rutgers and so far they've accomplished that mission. And he's one of the three-point shooters. Rutgers a 32 percent shooting three-point team for the season. Barrett three for 12 tonight. Three-point range for the Scarlet Knights. Here's Lane left side Allen ball fake. He gets by his man. And hits the runner. What a move. He put on Jason McCoy. A dozen points for Allen. And 
just like that, the lead back up to six. It was eight. Rutgers cut it to two. And the Pirates have it back up to a half dozen. Left side, McCoy gives to Coleman. 2-3, Seton Hall zone. That's the way they've played it most of the night. Jumper, Sherrod in the lane. And Lane tips the rebound to himself. His sixth rebound. No rhythm on offense from Rutgers. Uh, just no continuity, no flow. Guys are standing, no movement. Versus how Seton Hall's been playing. Just good rotations, good spacing, good screens. Guys flying off as picks. Foul away from the ball. A hold on Jason McCoy, his first, and two on the Scarlet Knights. Allen to inbound beneath the Pirates' basket. Finds Morton. Gives to Barrett. And Barrett will reset the offense. Barrett just this week named to the NABC first team all district three team. Lane on the curl around the manga screen. Missed the shot. And the shove will be called on the rebound on the Pirates. And Manga expressing disbelief, but no question about that call by Fran Connolly. Number foul, uh, foul number two on Manga, two on the Pirates here in the second half. Seton Hall has lost three straight. Before that, the Pirates had gone through 11 consecutive games, alternating wins and losses. But they've now lost three straight, five out of six. Down low, Morton with the reach in for the steal. Barrett has Lane to his left, Allen right. Allen sets up Lane for the three, but he can't get it to fall, and that's Tanny with the rebound. Seton Hall had the right idea on the break, but Lane just couldn't drain it. Wigan. Bounce pass, stolen by Morton. Back-to-back -back steals for the junior from the Bronx. When this 2-3 zone is giving Rutgers fits, they're just a step too slow in hitting the gaps. They're a step too slow in moving to open spots on the floor when someone penetrates, and the passing's been inefficient. And that's trouble for the Scarlet Knights as Coleman picks up his third personal foul. Three on Rutgers this half. Seaton Hall to inbound baseline again. Lane goes by Coleman, but Lane stepped on the end line. Against the 2-3 zone, nice help that time as Morton comes up to stop the penetration after Wigan got into the gap, but no one moved. See, once he got in the gap, you got to be open. you got to move to the open spots in the seams of the zone. It's not happening. Shields back in, and now 0 for 10. Kent with the offensive rebound. Can't get it to fall, but he draws the foul on Damian Frey. Sophomore from Huntington, New York, who just checked into the lineup. His first three on Seton Hall. And Kent will go to the free throw line. He has five points and seven rebounds. And this is the, his final game at the rack, unless the Rutgers does not get to the NCAA tournament, gets to the NIT, and very conceivably could have a home game in the NIT. Yep. But Kent hopes this is his last game at the rack. They've already been through that NIT business. They'd like to get to the NCAA tournament for the first time since 1991. You know, the amazing thing about this Rutgers team is that this is the first year in the history of the program where they have knocked off four nationally ranked teams. They were Big East teams, but they knocked them off. You know, I would think if you go back in time that it might be the Phil Sellers and Eddie Jordan years when they went to the Final Four, but it's not the case. It's this year's team. Great look inside, but Kent anticipated and comes away with the steal. Turnover number 14 for Seton Hall, and Rutgers turns it over for the 13th time. Here comes Barrett. He has Allen spotting up for the three to the left. Instead, it goes to Lane. Allen's still wide open. Now they get it to him. Rebound in the lane to Frey. Yeah. Allen almost banked in another one. Lane for three, no good, and Morton going for the rebound sends it into the Seton Hall bench. You know, if John Allen would have banked in that shot again, then we would have known. Then that we he, got problems. And we would have known that he did it on intentionally the first time. I love it when guys do that, Glenn, and they come back down to play defense and don't crack or smile no, at all. Not even a smirk. Nope. What do you mean? I didn't mean to bank it in. <laughs> Max Annie, left side, right, still looking to get on the board, but instead he steps on the baseline. The nightmare continues. 
for Ricky Shields. Last year, a McDonald's Honorable Mention All-American at the prep school level at Hargrave Military Academy. 